Hi, Dawn Lewis here, and I just wanted to say a huge thank you to all the amazing people who subscribed since the Save the Crafty YouTuber video hop. I was absolutely blown away with all your very kind comments. I can't wait to choose a winner, but I'm back today with my little friends because so many of you requested seeing how I colored them. So if you keep on watching, you're going to see how I did these with Copic markers. But I would love to know, if you're not a Copic colorer, would you like to see me retry these in pencil, watercolor, or even distress inks? Comment below, let me know what is your favorite coloring medium, and let's get coloring with our favorite sea friends. On the screen, you will see all of the colors and markers and so on that I've used, and you can pause this and take a screenshot if you want to save that for a reference for coloring your own. You can also find details on my blog, which I'll link to in the description box below. I'm just using three shades, trying to stick with three shades anyway, of B32, B34 and B37 for colouring this really cool little manta ray. Isn't he happy? I think it's so cute. I always do the same colouring method, well mostly do the same colouring method, where I'll colour all over with my palest shade uh, and I always use Express It Blending Card because it doesn't bleed but it lets the ink move and there's no peeling and you know, no pools of ink. I've, I've had all that happen with different ones and when I shade I do my palest color, my middle color which leaves a gap where the highlight will be and then I come in with my darker color which you know, throws in those deeper shadows, which is what gives your project some dimension uh, and makes it look so cool when it's done. I'll then come back with the middle color like I'm doing now and just sort of blend out those edges. And when I come in with the paler color, I'll just color where the pale area is and blend down into that middle tone, but try not to go all over. For the undercarriage of our cute little manta ray, I'm using C0, C1 and C2. This would look equally as good with warm colors, warm grays as it does with cool grays. Also toners and neutrals. If you've got those, use those. They all look good on this project. I haven't colored him all over and I did use a little R56 for the mouth. And for those cool dots, it's just a white gel pen, just a standard white gel pen. And you just dot random dots all over and you get this really sweet little manta ray. Now remember, screenshot this, pause and screenshot if you want to see all the colors, but I will put them up in groups as I go along. I'm coloring with G20 all over but I'm not coloring the dots. The dots are all going to be brown, the same brown as the shell. So it takes a little time going over around all these little tiny dots. And, and then I'll come in and I still have to work my shading around all the dots. Now it's sped up because I notice when I um when I edit these, I'm very conscious that I'm a really slow colorer. I do everything quite slowly, um, but I, it, it did get me to thinking. Sometimes I like to see exactly how something is done. So if you would really like to see maybe one of these projects in its own video with real-time coloring, let me know because I'm really keen to know, do you like the fast motion or would you prefer them, you know, in a little bit slower in real time? Uh, the other idea that I'm playing with is some live coloring videos and live card making videos here on YouTube, which would be so much fun to do. I love doing live videos and it would be super, super fun. So I'm keen to know if you're interested in watching that, maybe a half hour ones, maybe hour ones. All right, coming in with the shell, E21, 23 and 25 uh, I'm using them on the shells, but I'm also using those on the dots. The YR18 is for shells only. So it's for those large panels on the shell, because if you look at a tortoise shell, it's got this deep reddish orangey kind of oh, luster to it. T tortoises are just, turtles are so beautiful. Tortoises are beautiful, but turtles, oh, I don't know, there's something about them. I think they're amazing. On the dots, I've only used the darker colors on the larger dots. All right, we have our clownfish. Now, because this is a lot of orange, I've put up each single color as I go along. So it takes a little while to do them. So hopefully you can sort of keep track of what I'm doing with each color. Starting with the YR12, I'm going all over, but you do need to avoid the mouth and leave him with his white bands because the clownfish, they're so easy to identify with those gorgeous black and white smaller stripes. And it's easy to tell on this which is the white band because it's the smallest one. When I came in with the darker colors, so the YR14 and each subsequent color, 
on the fins, the side fin, the tail fin, the top fin, I have put in strokes and I've deliberately left them as stripes. When you look at a clownfish, they have, you can see all of the texture or the stripy texture on their fins. So I've left that in. So you'll notice that I only blend out the body. I'm actually not going to blend out the fins. So the next one is YR15. Now I could have stopped here at YR15. I think it looks really good, but I wanted to add a little extra depth into the shading. So I did come in with one extra orange and you can see I'm doing all those little flicky strokes on the fins so that you've got the the stripes there which are, you know you find it on a real live clownfish we have an amazing aquarium store near our home that have these beautiful marine tanks I love going in there and looking at all the gorgeous fish and they have um, tangs and and clownfish and when I'm here I'm shading I'm evening it out but with that paler one I'm only coming from the top down not coloring all over or it's going to desaturate it now we're going to move on to the blue tang oh I love these fish they're so vivid I'm starting with the yellow I've used Y0408 and 18 but you could probably use a variety of different yellows for this it's such a small area on this fish it just needs to be bright You'll see I put in a little flick there in that top section. I'm not coloring that blue because that part of a tang is actually black, but they have this blue dot on the side there. And so I've put a little bit of shading in that and I've just blended it out. You could go around this with a multi-liner, a fine liner of some sort, but I'm going to color in that section black anyway. So I figured I'd just go around it and wing it with the black. Bringing in that third shade of blue, the B28, just to give that depth. And you'll notice on all the fish, I'm leaving the highlight at the top because I figure the sun is coming down, filtering through the water, and it's the tops of the fish that are going to have the highlights and they're actually going to be quite dark on the underside. So that's why all the shades is kind of at the bottom and the highlight is at the top because it just makes sense for fish so I've blended it all out with the B24 and I'm trying not to color all over because I don't want it desaturated and now it's time for the black so when coloring with black you've got really two options with Copic markers there's a 100 and a 110 the 110 isn't quite as intense as a 100 so I went for that one so you could still see the stamp lines when you color with 100 that's it they're gone it's pure black here are the finished tangs and here are all my finished sea friends I do hope you enjoyed seeing how I colored all of these gorgeous sea creatures remember if you are looking for kindred stamps in Australia you can find them at dawnlewis.com.au and I'll link below to the UK and USA stockists as well if you missed the save the crafty youtuber video where I used all of these little guys to create a series of cards I'll link to that below as well I do hope that you have a very crafty day and I will see you next time bye for now